himself for a lot of the game. All right. Did you make it to the uh, football game? Yes, I did. Oh, good deal. And it was yeah, very, sure. very hot. Yeah. But your team won. Your team, unfortunately. Your, 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 your team won, yeah. fortunately. Yeah. I, uh, it was uh, both big in-state rivals for yeah. both of us. Oh, yeah. right. So he's a game cut. He's a close to tag. Well, he knows that. We're trying to pull the whole Clemson thing against him. One minute. So uh, when did you get back in yesterday? We got in, yeah. Technically, yesterday. It's okay. a long drive. Well, you've lost even more weight since last time I saw I you. Great. Yeah, you're looking a lot younger, man. Yeah. You almost look like a, a newscaster or something. Yeah. It was so hot that uh, my glasses had melted in the car. Oh, that sucks. Hit the game. Your, your good real glasses yeah. or your sunglasses? Yeah. Oh, man. So, fortunately, there was a lens crack. Yeah. Down the the, the lenses themselves melted? Yes. They had warped it. Wow. Oh. That's hot. That's yeah, that is hot. hot. They're usually pretty helpful though. I've had glasses break at Lens Crafters. Like, I shouldn't say break, but like twisted bad. That's, that's what happened here. And mm -hmm. sir. they've been able to like, basically they reheat it and then twist it back and they've been able to salvage truck glasses. Yeah, I've been wearing contacts and glasses since I was seven, so I'm going to be gambling. I know you have some vision issues if you. So, uh, Brad reached out to me. He had to leave uh, the area for a different case. And he said you want you you wanted to talk to him because you guys had been texting back and forth. Is that right? Well, I had texted you. You reached out to me and you reached out to him. Either, either I way, basically I to just you. Okay. I just kind of you know uh, politely, you know, respectfully asked mm -hmm. that you, know, you, you please dispose of the. Ridiculous issue down in Palm Bay with mm -hmm. my political, former political, um, and you know, give my mom some peace of mind because mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's pretty rotten. It's pretty bad. So, mm -hmm. so explain what's going on with that. So, my under why don't you tell me your version of what's going on with that? Because there's some something strange, some, something with number four. Hang on one second. I had a political poll okay. that had fifty percent. In mid July, yeah. I won a strong poll. Yeah, you 50 told me that. So you, you right, now, yeah. right. So then my opponents um, file a, a complaint against me. It's okay. forwarded to you and the FDLE. It hits the newspaper the same day people get absentees, and I end up with twenty percent of that. Okay. And I've got text messages from my opponents that he's communicating with you. Okay. So, w what was the nature of that complaint? But, okay. Uh, who is that? Who is so, yeah. Uh, the political, former political, I think like he, um, his name Thomas Don, G A U N E. At any rate, he has been, I, I know you guys have been communicating with him for some time because the whole water issue you asked me about, that originated. Mm -hmm. So it seems like you and my opponent have had a lot of okay. conversations with Well, I've had here. conversations with a lot of people. I understand. I understand. Um, uh, at any rate, Mr. Gom, in addition to being an opponent, as you know, has started a petition to change the charter of the city of Bombay. Okay. Um, the 
voters of the city of Palm Bay in 2016, rightfully. Um, we have to trust the voters, even when they lose. Um, rightfully <coughs> revised and modernized our charter by stating that the city council should have the power to impose special assessments, just like the other 400 cities in the state of Florida. Right. So then it passed. Um, Mr. Gong um, does not believe in special assessments. He's also um, heavily backed by the largest man in the city of Palm Bay, who has the greatest risk of being financially impacted by special assessments. Which was his that? name is David Malawi. Wow. David Malawi. Good, good luck. <laughs> David um, I think it's M. David. M. First initial M. Mm -hmm. Middle name David in Malawi. M. O. A. L. L. M. I think it's M. O. A. L. L. U. M. But he's he he owns thousands and thousands of blocks in the city of Palm So you'll notice that my former opponent signs with all of those properties. Okay. His group is largest done as we say. Malala. Again, Mr. Malala's the one who could be most positively or negatively impacted by the use of special assessment. Mm -hmm. um, at any rate, uh, it's been a very And a lot of it revolves around the special assessment issue. My mm -hmm. opponent, Mr. Don, was trying to repeal what was changed in the chart in 2016 by returning it back to the old language, which the old language that was in our charter stated that any time a special assessment uh, was to be imposed, that it would be voted on by the property owners. Okay. Not the city council, not registered voters, but by property owners. Mm -hmm. And of course, historically, it's always failed. Um, and therefore, our infrastructure in the is deteriorating. We can't replace it. Uh, at any rate, it has been contentious um, between Mr. Gong, myself, um, those who are trying to fix our infrastructure, and those, like I stated, Mr. Gong and others who wish to return it to the old. Okay. <clears throat> and I had been warned by a few residents and others that Mr. Gom and his team of circulators had been using, had been misrepresenting the facts regarding the intent of the proposed petition, uh, what it actually does, what it, what it did, um, what the council has done, and they were essentially lying and intimidating people to get them to sign petitions. Okay. So this had been multiple sources had been giving me that information, city manager, other folks. And I had made that statement to the police some months ago and was tarred and feathered for even making the, a, a statement like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm getting to yeah. I'm getting to where I'm going here. I just didn't really chart this thing, so it's better to understand the context. Okay. Um, my mom is out. Mm -hmm. um, she is. She is in her. She's 66 years old. And she's not in good health, but she's still a mom. Okay. She's still very protective. As a mother. I love her very much. I respect her very much because we all do very much. And um, she would watch things on Facebook on mass and Mr. Dahlman and those people who got attacking me, my family, my children, making statements to my wife. Um, pretty nasty stuff. And so at any rate, she had from time to time she'll come out. <coughs> it's not very often. We should come down more often, but a lot of it has to do with health and distance. And so she had asked me, and the part she had seen herself on Facebook, they would post where they would go out and collect petitions. They would do this at, in front of the DMV tax book, do it for a post office, wherever. Um, and commonly you would see them at the Friday Fest. Mm -hmm. 
first from which is a, it's a public park, essentially. There's vendors and the band ship. It's very public. People send up uh, Just tents, I should say. At any rate, um, so my mom had even said, I don't want to see, because they don't know. She had said, I bet you, I bet you they would tell me these things. I said, I don't want to just Okay. Mom is being a mom. Okay. And um, so she, on her own voice, um, I would even say to a certain degree, um, not at my recommendation, but the opposite. Okay. Um, she went out to, uh, she was visiting um, a couple months ago. She went to one of the Friday Fest where they have stayed in the island collecting petitions. And of course, um, she proceeded to record the interaction she had with from the time that she was walking by the booth right near the band ship. Um, she recorded it on her phone, it was her hand, okay. it was plain sight. Um, I don't know if it was an audio or video, I didn't really ask for that, but the point is, is that uh, you know as well as I do, that is a new expectation of privacy, and I understand too. I found out a lot of stuff after the fact that I know it's a two party consent state, et cetera, et cetera, but that is that there's no expectation of privacy uh, when you're yelling in front of a booth at a Friday. Night. <laughs> well, that's that's still being determined by the leaders in the state of Cruz right now because that's a personal conversation with you. I'm not sure how that's going to end. So I'm telling you now, that is not, that is one, yours is one interpretation, the state attorney's is going to be another. So that, that's up in the air right now. So she's not clear on that. Well, I, I need so. to, well, if she's not clear, then I guess we're done. Yeah. I, I, that's the reason why I'm here, is to try to clarify things. So I mean, if the state attorney and you and FD elite don't understand the simple, you know, interpretation statute, the yeah. case the law. Other, the other friend approved, she signed that petition. Did she? Yes, she did. She did sign. You have you have factual evidence. I have the recordings. You have the recordings. And I have the papers that she signed. So she claimed she was she said in the recordings that she was a resident of Florida. She was not. She lied and she signed the papers. Now, that's not what I'm concerned about. I'm more concerned about the information that you've held back on us. If you're willing to give us more information, we can make that part disappear. I think I'm willing. Okay. Fair enough. Because I don't, I don't, I see where I see that you're even willing to use, to use my mother. No, you used your mother. You wired her up, you're doing recording. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. You just said that I wired my mother up to record. That's what you just said, right? Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Right. I don't think Thank your you. mother just did that on her own. You and I both know that. Okay. Are you familiar with violation 1001? That's lying with that. Oh, that's a lot.